A rocket from Italian rocketto, bobbin, is a missile, spacecraft, aircraft or other vehicle that obtains thrust from a rocket engine. Rocket engine exhaust is formed entirely from propellant carried within the rocket before use. Rocket engines work by action and reaction and push rockets forward simply by expelling their exhaust in the opposite direction at high speed, and can therefore work in the vacuum of space. In fact, rockets work more efficiently in space than in an atmosphere. Multistage rockets are capable of attaining escape velocity from Earth and therefore can achieve unlimited maximum altitude. Compared with airbreathing engines, rockets are lightweight and powerful and capable of generating large accelerations. To control their flight, rockets rely on momentum, airfoils, auxiliary reaction engines, gimbaled thrust, momentum wheels, deflection of the exhaust stream, propellant flow, spin, or gravity. Rockets for military and recreational uses date back to at least 13th century China. Significant scientific, interplanetary and industrial use did not occur until the 20th century, when rocketry was the enabling technology for the space age, including setting foot on the Earth's moon. Rockets are now used for fireworks, weaponry, ejection seats, launch vehicles for artificial satellites, human spaceflight, and space exploration. Chemical rockets are the most common type of high-power rocket, typically creating a high-speed exhaust by the combustion of fuel with an oxidizer. The stored propellant can be a simple pressurized gas or a single liquid fuel that disassociates in the presence of a catalyst monopropellants, two liquids that spontaneously react on contact hypergolic propellants, two liquids that must be ignited to react, a solid combination of fuel with oxidizer solid fuel, or solid fuel with liquid oxidizer hybrid propellant system. Chemical rockets store a large amount of energy in an easily released form, and can be very dangerous. However, careful design, testing, construction and use minimizes risks. History The first gunpowder-powered rockets evolved in medieval China under the Song dynasty by the 13th century. The Mongols adopted Chinese rocket technology and the invention spread via the Mongol invasions to the Middle East and to Europe in the mid-13th century. Rockets are recorded in use by the Song navy in a military exercise dated to 1245. Internal combustion rocket propulsion is mentioned in a reference to 1264, recording that the ground rat, a type of firework, had frightened the Empress Mother Gongsheng at a feast held in her honor by her son the Emperor Lizong. Subsequently, rockets are included in the military treatise Huolongjing, also known as the Fire Drake Manual, written by the Chinese artillery officer Zhao Yu in the mid-14th century. This text mentions the first known multistage rocket, the Fire Dragon issuing from the water Huo Long Chu Shui, thought to have been used by the Chinese Navy. Medieval and early modern rockets were used militarily as incendiary weapons in sieges. Between 1270 and 1280, Hassan al-Rama wrote al-Furushiya wa al-Manasib al-Harbiya the Book of Military Horsemanship and Ingenious War Devices, which included 107 gunpowder recipes, 22 of them for rockets. In Europe, Conrad Kaiser described rockets in his military treatise Bellafortis around 1405. The name, 
rocket comes from the Italian rochetta, meaning bobbin or little spindle, given due to the similarity in shape to the bobbin or spool used to hold the thread to be fed to a spinning wheel. Leonard Fransberger and Konrad Haas adopted the Italian term into German in the mid 16th century. Rocket appears in English by the early 17th century. Artis Magne Artilleriae Pars Prima, an important early modern work on rocket artillery, by Kazimir Semyonovich, was first printed in Amsterdam in 1650. The Mysorean rockets were the first successful iron-cased rockets, developed in the late 18th century in the Kingdom of Mysore part of present-day India by Tipu Sultan. The Congreve rocket was a British weapon designed and developed by Sir William Congreve in 1804. This rocket was based directly on the Mysorean rockets, used compressed powder and was fielded in the Napoleonic Wars. It was Congreve rockets that Francis Scott Key was referring to when he wrote of the "'Rocket's Red Glare' while held captive on a British ship that was laying siege to Fort McHenry in 1814. Together, the Mysorean and British innovations increased the effective range of military rockets from 100 to 2,000 yards. The first mathematical treatment of the dynamics of rocket propulsion is due to William Moore 1813. In 1815 Alexander Dmitrievich Zasyadko constructed rocket launching platforms, which allowed rockets to be fired in salvos six rockets at a time, and gun-laying devices. William Hale in 1844 greatly increased the accuracy of rocket artillery. Edward Monier Boxer further improved the Congreve rocket in 1865. William Leach first proposed the concept of using rockets to enable human spaceflight in 1861. Konstantin Tsiolkovsky later in 1903 also conceived this idea, and extensively developed a body of theory that has provided the foundation for subsequent spaceflight development. Robert Goddard in 1920 published proposed improvements to rocket technology in a method of reaching extreme altitudes. In 1923, Hermann Oberth 1894 to 1989 published Die Rakete zu den Planeten Roman, the Rocket into Modern rockets originated in 1926 when Goddard attached a supersonic de Laval nozzle to the combustion chamber of a liquid propellant rocket. These nozzles turn the hot gas from the combustion chamber into a cooler, hypersonic, highly directed jet of gas, more than doubling the thrust and raising the engine efficiency from 2% to 64%. Use of liquid propellants instead of gunpowder greatly improved the effectiveness of rocket artillery in World War II and opened up the possibility of manned space flight after 1945. In 1943 production of the V-2 rocket began in Germany. In parallel with the German guided missile program, rockets were also used on aircraft, either for assisting horizontal takeoff RATO, vertical takeoff Bochum Ba 349. Nader, or for powering them Mi-163, see List of World War II guided missiles of Germany. The Allies' rocket programs were less technological, relying mostly on unguided missiles like the Soviet Katyusha rocket. 
The Americans captured a large number of German rocket scientists, including Werner von Braun, in 1945, and brought them to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip. After World War II, scientists used rockets to study high altitude conditions by radio telemetry of temperature and pressure of the atmosphere, detection of cosmic rays, and further techniques. Note to the Bell X-1, the first manned vehicle to break the sound barrier, 1947. Independently, in the Soviet Union space program research continued under the leadership of the chief designer Sergei Korolyov During the Cold War rockets became extremely important militarily with the development of modern intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs. The 1960s saw rapid development of rocket technology, particularly in the Soviet Union Vostok, Soyuz, Proton, and in the United States e the X Rockets came into use for space exploration. American manned programs Project Mercury, Project Gemini and later the Apollo program culminated in 1969 with the first manned landing on the Moon, using equipment launched by the Saturn V rocket. <laughs> Topic. Types Vehicle configurations Rocket vehicles are often constructed in the archetypal tall thin rocket shape that takes off vertically, but there are actually many different types of rockets including tiny models such as balloon rockets, water rockets, sky rockets or small solid rockets that can be purchased at a hobby store. Missiles Space rockets such as the enormous Saturn V used for the Apollo program. Rocket cars. Rocket bike. Rocket powered aircraft including rocket assisted takeoff of conventional aircraft, RATO. Rocket sleds. Rocket trains. Rocket torpedoes. Rocket powered jet packs. Rapid escape systems such as ejection seats and launch escape systems Space probes Topic. Design A rocket design can be as simple as a cardboard tube filled with black powder, but to make an efficient, accurate rocket or missile involves overcoming a number of difficult problems. The main difficulties include cooling the combustion chamber, pumping the fuel in the case of a liquid fuel, and controlling and correcting the direction of motion. Topic. Components Rockets consist of a propellant, a place to put propellant such as a propellant tank, and a nozzle. They may also have one or more rocket engines, directional stabilization devices such as fins, vernier engines or engine gimbals for thrust vectoring, gyroscopes and a structure typically monocoque, to hold these components together. Rockets intended for high-speed atmospheric use also have an aerodynamic fairing such as a nose cone, which usually holds the payload, as well as these components. Rockets can have any number of other components, such as wings, rocket planes, parachutes, wheels, rocket cars, even, in a sense, a person rocket belt. Vehicles frequently possess navigation systems and guidance systems that typically use satellite navigation and inertial navigation systems. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Engines. 
Rocket engines employ the principle of jet propulsion. The rocket engines powering rockets come in a great variety of different types, a comprehensive list can be found in rocket engine. Most current rockets are chemically powered rockets usually internal combustion engines, but some employ a decomposing monopropellant that emit a hot exhaust gas. A rocket engine can use gas propellants, solid propellant, liquid propellant, or a hybrid mixture of both solid and liquid. Some rockets use heat or pressure that is supplied from a source other than the chemical reaction of propellants, such as steam rockets, solar thermal rockets, nuclear thermal rocket engines or simple pressurized rockets such as water rocket or cold gas thrusters. With combustive propellants a chemical reaction is initiated between the fuel and the oxidizer in the combustion chamber, and the resultant hot gases accelerate out of a rocket engine nozzle or nozzles at the rearward facing end of the rocket. The acceleration of these gases through the engine exerts force thrust on the combustion chamber and nozzle, propelling the vehicle according to Newton's third law. This actually happens because the force pressure times area on the combustion chamber wall is unbalanced by the nozzle opening, this is not the case in any other direction. The shape of the nozzle also generates force by directing the exhaust gas along the axis of the rocket. Topic. Propellant Rocket propellant is mass that is stored, usually in some form of propellant tank or casing, prior to being used as the propulsive mass that is ejected from a rocket engine in the form of a fluid jet to produce thrust. For chemical rockets often the propellants are a fuel such as liquid hydrogen or kerosene burned with an oxidizer such as liquid oxygen or nitric acid to produce large volumes of very hot gas. The oxidizer is either kept separate and mixed in the combustion chamber, or comes pre-mixed, as with solid rockets. Sometimes the propellant is not burned but still undergoes a chemical reaction, and can be a monopropellant such as hydrazine, nitrous oxide or hydrogen peroxide that can be catalytically decomposed to hot gas. Alternatively, an inert propellant can be used that can be externally heated, such as in steam rocket, solar thermal rocket or nuclear thermal rockets, for smaller, low-performance rockets such as attitude control thrusters where high performance is less necessary, a pressurized fluid is used as propellant that simply escapes the spacecraft through a propelling nozzle. Topic. Uses Rockets or other similar reaction devices carrying their own propellant must be used when there is no other substance land, water, or air or force gravity, magnetism, light that a vehicle may usefully employ for propulsion, such as in space. In these circumstances, it is necessary to carry all the propellant to be used. However, they are also useful in other situations. Topic: Military. Some military weapons use rockets to propel warheads to their targets. A rocket and its payload together are generally referred to as a missile when the weapon has a guidance system not all missiles use rocket engines, some use other engines such as jets or as a rocket if it is unguided. 
Anti-tank and anti-aircraft missiles use rocket engines to engage targets at high speed at a range of several miles, while intercontinental ballistic missiles can be used to deliver multiple nuclear warheads from thousands of miles, and anti-ballistic missiles try to stop them. Rockets have also been tested for reconnaissance, such as the Ping Pong rocket, which was launched to surveil enemy targets. However, recon rockets have never come into wide use in the military. Topic: <laughs> Science and Research. Sounding rockets are commonly used to carry instruments that take readings from 50 kilometers (31 miles) to 1500 kilometers (930 miles) above the surface of the earth. Rocket engines are also used to propel rocket sleds along a rail at extremely high speed. The world record for this is Mach 8.5. Topic. Space flight Larger rockets are normally launched from a launch pad that provides stable support until a few seconds after ignition. Due to their high exhaust velocity, 2500 to 4500 meters per second 9000 to 16200 kilometers per hour 5600 to 10100 miles per hour rockets are particularly useful when very high speeds are required such as orbital speed at approximately 7800 meters per second 28000 kilometers per hour 17000 miles per hour spacecraft delivered into orbital trajectories become artificial satellites which are used for many commercial purposes Indeed, rockets remain the only way to launch spacecraft into orbit and beyond. They are also used to rapidly accelerate spacecraft when they change orbits or deorbit for landing. Also, a rocket may be used to soften a hard parachute landing immediately before touchdown. See retro rocket. Topic. Rescue Rockets were used to propel a line to a stricken ship so that a breech's buoy can be used to rescue those on board. Rockets are also used to launch emergency flares. Some crewed rockets, notably the Saturn V and Soyuz have launch escape systems. This is a small, usually solid rocket that is capable of pulling the crewed capsule away from the main vehicle towards safety at a moment's notice. These types of systems have been operated several times, both in testing and in flight, and operated correctly each time. This was the case when the Safety Assurance System Soviet nomenclature successfully pulled away the L-3 capsule during three of the four failed launches of the Soviet Moon rocket, N-1 vehicles 3L, 5L and 7L. In all three cases the capsule, albeit unmanned, was saved from destruction. Only the three aforementioned N-1 rockets had functional safety assurance systems. The outstanding vehicle, 6L, had dummy upper stages and therefore no escape system giving the N-1 booster a 100% success rate for egress from a failed launch. A successful escape of a manned capsule occurred when Soyuz T-10, on a mission to the Salyut 7 space station, exploded on the pad. Solid rocket propelled ejection seats are used in many military aircraft to propel crew away to safety from a vehicle when flight control is lost. Topic. Hobby, sport, and entertainment 
hobbyists build and fly a wide variety of model rockets. Many companies produce model rocket kits and parts but due to their inherent simplicity some hobbyists have been known to make rockets out of almost anything. Rockets are also used in some types of consumer and professional fireworks. A water-powered rocket is a type of model rocket using water as its reaction mass. The pressure vessel the engine of the rocket is usually a used plastic soft drink bottle. The water is forced out by a pressurized gas, typically compressed air. It is an example of Newton's third law of motion. The scale of amateur rocketry can range from a small rocket launched in one's own backyard to a rocket that reached space. Amateur rocketry is split into three categories according to total engine impulse, low power, mid power, and high power. Australia, Austria, Canada, Germany, New Zealand, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and the United States have high power rocket associations which provide certifications to its members to fly different rocket motor sizes. While joining these organizations is not a requirement, they often provide insurance and flight waivers for their members. Hydrogen peroxide rockets are used to power jet packs, and have been used to power cars and a rocket car holds the all-time drag racing record. Corpulent Stump is the most powerful non-commercial rocket ever launched on an Aerotech engine in the United Kingdom. Topic. Noise. Rocket exhaust generates a significant amount of acoustic energy. As the supersonic exhaust collides with the ambient air, shock waves are formed. The sound intensity from these shock waves depends on the size of the rocket as well as the exhaust velocity. The sound intensity of large, high performance rockets could potentially kill at close range. The Space Shuttle generated 180 decibels of noise around its base. To combat this, NASA developed a sound suppression system which can flow water at rates up to 900,000 gallons per minute 57 cubic meters per second onto the launch pad. The water reduces the noise level from 180 decibels down to 142 decibels the design requirement is 145 decibels. Without the sound suppression system, acoustic waves would reflect off of the launch pad towards the rocket, vibrating the sensitive payload and crew. These acoustic waves can be so severe as to damage or destroy the rocket. Noise is generally most intense when a rocket is close to the ground, since the noise from the engines radiates up away from the jet, as well as reflecting off the ground. This noise can be reduced somewhat by flame trenches with roofs, by water injection around the jet and by deflecting the jet at an angle. For crewed rockets various methods are used to reduce the sound intensity for the passengers, and typically the placement of the astronauts far away from the rocket engines helps significantly. For the passengers and crew, when a vehicle goes supersonic the sound cuts off as the sound waves are no longer able to keep up with the vehicle. Topic. Physics Topic. Operation The effect of the combustion of propellant in the rocket engine is to increase the velocity of the resulting gases to very high speeds, hence producing a thrust. 
Initially, the gases of combustion are sent in every direction, but only those that produce a net thrust have any effect. The ideal direction of motion of the exhaust is in the direction so as to cause thrust. At the top end of the combustion chamber the hot, energetic gas fluid cannot move forward, and so, it pushes upward against the top of the rocket engine's combustion chamber. As the combustion gases approach the exit of the combustion chamber, they increase in speed. The effect of the convergent part of the rocket engine nozzle on the high-pressure fluid of combustion gases, is to cause the gases to accelerate to high speed. The higher the speed of the gases, the lower the pressure of the gas Bernoulli's principle or conservation of energy acting on that part of the combustion chamber. In a properly designed engine, the flow will reach Mach 1 at the throat of the nozzle, at which point the speed of the flow increases. Beyond the throat of the nozzle, a bell-shaped expansion part of the engine allows the gases that are expanding to push against that part of the rocket engine. Thus, the bell part of the nozzle gives additional thrust. Simply expressed, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, according to Newton's third law with the result that the exiting gases produce the reaction of a force on the rocket causing it to accelerate the rocket. In a closed chamber, the pressures are equal in each direction and no acceleration occurs. If an opening is provided in the bottom of the chamber then the pressure is no longer acting on the missing section. This opening permits the exhaust to escape. The remaining pressures give a resultant thrust on the side opposite the opening, and these pressures are what push the rocket along. The shape of the nozzle is important. Consider a balloon propelled by air coming out of a tapering nozzle. In such a case the combination of air pressure and viscous friction is such that the nozzle does not push the balloon but is pulled by it. Using a convergent, divergent nozzle gives more force since the exhaust also presses on it as it expands outwards, roughly doubling the total force. If propellant gas is continuously added to the chamber then these pressures can be maintained for as long as propellant remains. Note that in the case of liquid propellant engines, the pumps moving the propellant into the combustion chamber must maintain a pressure larger than the combustion chamber, typically on the order of 100 atmospheres. As a side effect, these pressures on the rocket also act on the exhaust in the opposite direction and accelerate this exhaust to very high speeds, according to Newton's third law. From the principle of conservation of momentum the speed of the exhaust of a rocket determines how much momentum increase is created for a given amount of propellant. This is called the rocket's specific impulse. Because a rocket, propellant and exhaust in flight, without any external perturbations, may be considered as a closed system, the total momentum is always constant. Therefore, the faster the net speed of the exhaust in one direction, the greater the speed of the rocket can achieve in the opposite direction. This is especially true since the rocket body's mass is typically far lower than the final total exhaust mass. Topic: <laughs> Forces on a rocket in flight. The general study of the forces on a rocket is part of the field of ballistics. Spacecraft are further studied in the subfield of astrodynamics. Flying rockets are primarily affected by the following Thrust from the engines Gravity from celestial bodies Drag if moving in atmosphere 
lift, usually relatively small effect except for rocket powered aircraft. In addition, the inertia and centrifugal pseudo force can be significant due to the path of the rocket around the center of a celestial body. When high enough speeds in the right direction and altitude are achieved, a stable orbit or escape velocity is obtained. These forces, with a stabilizing tail the impenage present will, unless deliberate control efforts are made, naturally cause the vehicle to follow a roughly parabolic trajectory termed a gravity turn, and this trajectory is often used at least during the initial part of a launch. This is true even if the rocket engine is mounted at the nose, vehicles can thus maintain low or even zero angle of attack, which minimizes transverse stress on the launch vehicle, permitting a weaker, and hence lighter, launch vehicle. Topic. Drag Drag is a force opposite to the direction of the rocket's motion relative to any air it is moving through. This slows the speed of the vehicle and produces structural loads. The deceleration forces for fast-moving rockets are calculated using the drag equation. Drag can be minimized by an aerodynamic nose cone and by using a shape with a high ballistic coefficient, the classic rocket shape, long and thin, and by keeping the rocket's angle of attack as low as possible. During a rocket launch, as the vehicle speed increases, and the atmosphere thins, there is a point of maximum aerodynamic drag called max Q. This determines the minimum aerodynamic strength of the vehicle, as the rocket must avoid buckling under these forces. Topic. Net thrust A typical rocket engine can handle a significant fraction of its own mass in propellant each second, with the propellant leaving the nozzle at several kilometers per second. This means that the thrust to weight ratio of a rocket engine, and often the entire vehicle can be very high, in extreme cases over 100. This compares with other jet propulsion engines that can exceed 5 for some of the better engines. It can be shown that the net thrust of a rocket is F N equals M V E display style F underscore N equals dot M V underscore E where m equals display style dot m equals propellant flow kilogram per second or pound per second v e equals display style v underscore e equals the effective exhaust velocity meter per second or foot per second the effective exhaust velocity v e display style v underscore e is more or less the speed the exhaust leaves the vehicle and in the vacuum of space the effective exhaust velocity is often equal to the actual average exhaust speed along the thrust axis however the effective exhaust velocity allows for various losses and notably is reduced when operated within an atmosphere the rate of propellant flow through a rocket engine is often deliberately varied over a flight, to provide a way to control the thrust and thus the airspeed of the vehicle. This, for example, allows minimization of aerodynamic losses and can limit the increase of G-forces due to the reduction in propellant load. Topic. Total impulse 
impulse is defined as a force acting on an object over time, which in the absence of opposing forces gravity and aerodynamic drag, changes the momentum integral of mass and velocity of the object. As such, it is the best performance class payload mass and terminal velocity capability indicator of a rocket, rather than takeoff thrust, mass, or power. The total impulse of a rocket stage burning its propellant is I equals F D T display style i equals in fdt when there is fixed thrust this is simply i equals f t display style i equals feet the total impulse of a multi-stage rocket is the sum of the impulses of the individual stages Topic. Specific impulse As can be seen from the thrust equation, the effective speed of the exhaust controls the amount of thrust produced from a particular quantity of fuel burnt per second. An equivalent measure, the net impulse per weight unit of propellant expelled, is called specific impulse I S P display style I underscore S P and this is one of the most important figures that describes a rocket's performance. It is defined such that it is related to the effective exhaust velocity by V E equals I S P G zero display style v underscore e equals i underscore s p c d o t g underscore zero, where i s p display style i underscore s p has units of seconds. G zero display style G underscore zero is the acceleration at the surface of the Earth. This the greater the specific impulse, the greater the net thrust and performance of the engine. I S P display style I underscore S P is determined by measurement while testing the engine. In practice the effective exhaust velocities of rockets varies but can be extremely high, approximately 4,500 m per second, about 15 times the sea level speed of sound in air. Topic. Delta V rocket equation. The delta V capacity of a rocket is the theoretical total change in velocity that a rocket can achieve without any external interference without air drag or gravity or other forces. When V E display style V underscore E is constant, the delta V that a rocket vehicle can provide can be calculated from the Tsiolkovsky rocket equation. Delta V equals V E lane M zero M one Display style delta v equals v underscore e lane frac m underscore zero m underscore one, where m zero 
display style m underscore zero is the initial total mass, including propellant, in kilogram or lb m one display style m underscore one is the final total mass in kilogram or lb v e display style v underscore e is the effective exhaust velocity in meter per second or foot per second delta v display style delta v is the delta v in meter per second or foot per second when launched from the earth practical delta versus for a single rocket's carrying payloads can be a few kilometer per second some theoretical designs have rockets with delta versus over 9 km per second. The required delta V can also be calculated for a particular maneuver, for example the delta V to launch from the surface of the Earth to low Earth orbit is about 9.7 km per second, which leaves the vehicle with a sideways speed of about 7.8 km per second at an altitude of around 200 km. In this maneuver about 1.9 km per second is lost in air drag, gravity drag and gaining altitude. The ratio m 0 m 1 Display style frac m underscore 0 m underscore 1 is sometimes called the mass ratio. Topic: Mass ratios. Almost all of a launch vehicle's mass consists of propellant. Mass ratio is for any burn the ratio between the rocket's initial mass and its final mass. Everything else being equal, a high mass ratio is desirable for good performance, since it indicates that the rocket is lightweight and hence performs better, for essentially the same reasons that low weight is desirable in sports cars. Rockets as a group have the highest thrust to weight ratio of any type of engine, and this helps vehicles achieve high mass ratios, which improves the performance of flights. The higher the ratio, the less engine mass is needed to be carried. This permits the carrying of even more propellant, enormously improving the delta V. Alternatively, some rockets such as for rescue scenarios or racing carry relatively little propellant and payload and thus need only a lightweight structure and instead achieve high accelerations. For example, the Soyuz escape system can produce 20 grams. Achievable mass ratios are highly dependent on many factors such as propellant type, the design of engine the vehicle uses, structural safety margins and construction techniques. The highest mass ratios are generally achieved with liquid rockets, and these types are usually used for orbital launch vehicles, a situation which calls for a high delta V. Liquid propellants generally have densities similar to water, with the notable exceptions of liquid hydrogen and liquid methane, and these types are able to use lightweight, low pressure tanks and typically run high performance turbopumps to force the propellant into the combustion chamber. Some notable mass fractions are found in the following table some aircraft are included for comparison purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Staging 
Thus far, the required velocity, delta v, to achieve orbit has been unattained by any single rocket because the propellant, tankage, structure, guidance, valves and engines and so on, take a particular minimum percentage of takeoff mass that is too great for the propellant it carries to achieve that delta v carrying reasonable payloads. Since single stage to orbit has so far not been achievable, orbital rockets always have more than one stage. For example, the first stage of the Saturn V, carrying the weight of the upper stages, was able to achieve a mass ratio of about 10, and achieved a specific impulse of 263 seconds. This gives a delta V of around 5.9 km per second whereas around 9.4 km per second delta V is needed to achieve orbit with all losses allowed for. This problem is frequently solved by staging. The rocket sheds excess weight usually empty tankage and associated engines during launch. Staging is either serial where the rocket's light after the previous stage has fallen away, or parallel, where rockets are burning together and then detach when they burn out. The maximum speeds that can be achieved with staging is theoretically limited only by the speed of light. However the payload that can be carried goes down geometrically with each extra stage needed, while the additional delta V for each stage is simply additive. <laughs> Acceleration and thrust to weight ratio From Newton's second law, the acceleration display style of a vehicle as simply a equals f n m display style equals frac f underscore n m where m is the instantaneous mass of the vehicle and f n Display style F underscore N is the net force acting on the rocket, mostly thrust, but air drag and other forces can play a part. As the remaining propellant decreases, rocket vehicles become lighter and their acceleration tends to increase until the propellant is exhausted. This means that much of the speed change occurs towards the end of the burn when the vehicle is much lighter. However, the thrust can be throttled to offset or vary this if needed. Discontinuities in acceleration also occur when stages burn out, often starting at a lower acceleration with each new stage firing. Peak accelerations can be increased by designing the vehicle with a reduced mass, usually achieved by a reduction in the fuel load and tankage and associated structures, but obviously this reduces range, delta V and burn time. Still, for some applications that rockets are used for, a high peak acceleration applied for just a short time is highly desirable. The minimal mass of vehicle consists of a rocket engine with minimal fuel and structure to carry it. In that case the thrust to weight ratio of the rocket engine limits the maximum acceleration that can be designed. It turns out that rocket engines generally have truly excellent thrust to weight ratios 137 for the NK-33 engine, some solid rockets are over 1000, and nearly all really high G vehicles employ or have employed rockets. The high accelerations that rockets naturally possess means that rocket vehicles are often capable of vertical takeoff, and in some cases, with suitable guidance and control of the engines, also vertical landing. 
For these operations to be done it is necessary for a vehicle's engines to provide more than the local gravitational acceleration. Energy Topic: Energy efficiency Rocket launch vehicles take off with a great deal of flames, noise and drama, and it might seem obvious that they are grievously inefficient. However, while they are far from perfect, their energy efficiency is not as bad as might be supposed. The energy density of a typical rocket propellant is often around one third that of conventional hydrocarbon fuels. The bulk of the mass is often relatively inexpensive oxidizer. Nevertheless, at takeoff the rocket has a great deal of energy in the fuel and oxidizer stored within the vehicle. It is of course desirable that as much of the energy of the propellant end up as kinetic or potential energy of the body of the rocket as possible. Energy from the fuel is lost in air drag and gravity drag and is used for the rocket to gain altitude and speed. However, much of the lost energy ends up in the exhaust. In a chemical propulsion device, the engine efficiency is simply the ratio of the kinetic power of the exhaust gases and the power available from the chemical reaction. Eta C equals 1 2 M V E two Ada C O M B U S T I O N P C H E M display style ADA underscore C equals FRAC FRAC 1 2 dot M V underscore E carrot 2 ADA underscore combustion P underscore chem 100% efficiency within the engine engine efficiency ADA C equals one hundred per cent display style ADA underscore C equals one hundred per cent would mean that all the heat energy of the combustion products is converted into kinetic energy of the jet. This is not possible, but the near adiabatic high expansion ratio nozzles that can be used with rockets come surprisingly close. When the nozzle expands the gas, the gas is cooled and accelerated, and an energy efficiency of up to 70% can be achieved. Most of the rest is heat energy in the exhaust that is not recovered. The high efficiency is a consequence of the fact that rocket combustion can be performed at very high temperatures and the gas is finally released at much lower temperatures, and so giving good Carnot efficiency. However, engine efficiency is not the whole story. In common with the other jet-based engines, but particularly in rockets due to their high and typically fixed exhaust speeds, rocket vehicles are extremely inefficient at low speeds irrespective of the engine efficiency. The problem is that at low speeds, the exhaust carries away a huge amount of kinetic energy rearward. This phenomenon is termed propulsive efficiency. Ada P display style underscore P 
However, as speeds rise, the resultant exhaust speed goes down, and the overall vehicle energetic efficiency rises, reaching a peak of around 100% of the engine efficiency when the vehicle is traveling exactly at the same speed that the exhaust is emitted. In this case the exhaust would ideally stop dead in space behind the moving vehicle, taking away zero energy, and from conservation of energy, all the energy would end up in the vehicle. The efficiency then drops off again at even higher speeds as the exhaust ends up traveling forwards, trailing behind the vehicle. From these principles it can be shown that the propulsive efficiency eta p display style eta underscore p for a rocket moving at speed u display style u with an exhaust velocity c display style c is Ada P equals two U C one plus U C two Display style eta underscore p equals frac two frac u c one plus frac u c caret two, and the overall instantaneous energy efficiency eta display style eta is eta equals Ada P Ada C Display style Ada equals Ada underscore P Ada underscore C For example, from the equation within Ada C Display style Ada underscore C of 0.7, a rocket flying at Mach 0.85, which most aircraft crews at with an exhaust velocity of Mach 10, would have a predicted overall energy efficiency of 5.9%, whereas a conventional, modern, air-breathing jet engine achieves closer to 35% efficiency. Thus a rocket would need about 6x more energy, and allowing for the specific energy of rocket propellant being around one-third that of conventional air fuel, roughly 18x more mass of propellant would need to be carried for the same journey. This is why rockets are rarely if ever used for general aviation. Since the energy ultimately comes from fuel, these considerations mean that rockets are mainly useful when a very high speed is required, such as ICBMs or orbital launch. For example, NASA's Space Shuttle fires its engines for around 8.5 minutes, consuming 1,000 tons of solid propellant containing 16% aluminium and an additional 2 million liters of liquid propellant 106,261 kilograms of liquid hydrogen fuel to lift the 100,000 kilograms vehicle including the 25,000 kilograms payload to an altitude of 111 km and an orbital velocity of 30,000 km per hour. At this altitude and velocity, the vehicle has a kinetic energy of about 3 TJ and a potential energy of roughly 200 GJ. Given the initial energy of 20 TJ, the Space Shuttle is about 16% energy efficient at launching the orbiter. Thus jet engines, with a better match between speed and jet exhaust speed such as turbofans, in spite of their worse, eta c display style eta underscore c 
dominate for subsonic and supersonic atmospheric use, while rockets work best at hypersonic speeds. On the other hand, rockets serve in many short-range relatively low-speed military applications where their low-speed inefficiency is outweighed by their extremely high thrust and hence high accelerations. Topic. Oberth effect One subtle feature of rockets relates to energy. A rocket stage, while carrying a given load, is capable of giving a particular delta V. This delta V means that the speed increases or decreases by a particular amount, independent of the initial speed. However, because kinetic energy is a square law on speed, this means that the faster the rocket is traveling before the burn the more orbital energy it gains or loses. This fact is used in interplanetary travel. It means that the amount of delta v to reach other planets, over and above that to reach escape velocity can be much less if the delta v is applied when the rocket is traveling at high speeds, close to the Earth or other planetary surface, whereas waiting until the rocket has slowed at altitude multiplies up the effort required to achieve the desired trajectory. Topic. Safety, reliability and accidents The reliability of rockets, as for all physical systems, is dependent on the quality of engineering design and construction. Because of the enormous chemical energy in rocket propellants greater energy by weight than explosives, but lower than gasoline, consequences of accidents can be severe. Most space missions have some problems. In 1986, following the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, American physicist Richard Feynman, having served on the Rogers Commission estimated that the chance of an unsafe condition for a launch of the shuttle was very roughly 1%. More recently the historical per-person flight risk in orbital spaceflight has been calculated to be around 2% or 4%. Topic costs and economics The costs of rockets can be roughly divided into propellant costs, the costs of obtaining and or producing the dry mass of the rocket, and the costs of any required support equipment and facilities. Most of the takeoff mass of a rocket is normally propellant. However propellant is seldom more than a few times more expensive than gasoline per kilogram as of 2009 gasoline was about $1 per kilogram 45 cents per pound or less, and although substantial amounts are needed, for all but the very cheapest rockets, it turns out that the propellant costs are usually comparatively small, although not completely negligible. With liquid oxygen costing 15 cents per kilogram $0.068 per pound and liquid hydrogen $2.20 per kilogram $1 per pound, the Space Shuttle in 2009 had a liquid propellant expense of approximately $1.4 million for each launch that cost $450 million from other expenses with 40% of the mass of propellants used by it being liquids in the external fuel tank, 60% solids in the SRBs, even though a rocket's non-propellant, dry mass is often only between 5-20% of total mass, nevertheless this cost dominates. For hardware with the performance used in orbital launch vehicles, expenses of $2,000 to $10,000 plus per kilogram of dry weight are common, primarily from engineering, fabrication, and testing. Raw materials amount to typically around 2% of total expense. 
For most rockets except reusable ones shuttle engines, the engines need not function more than a few minutes, which simplifies design. Extreme performance requirements for rockets reaching orbit correlate with high cost, including intensive quality control to ensure reliability despite the limited safety factors allowable for weight reasons. Components produced in small numbers if not individually machined can prevent amortization of R&D and facility costs over mass production to the degree seen in more pedestrian manufacturing. Amongst liquid-fueled rockets, complexity can be influenced by how much hardware must be lightweight, like pressure-fed engines can have two orders of magnitude lesser part count than pump-fed engines but led to more weight by needing greater tank pressure, most often used in just small maneuvering thrusters as a consequence, to change the preceding factors for orbital launch vehicles, proposed methods have included mass producing simple rockets in large quantities or on large scale, or developing reusable rockets meant to fly very frequently to amortize their upfront expense over many payloads, or reducing rocket performance requirements by constructing a non-rocket space launch system for part of the velocity to orbit or all of it but with most methods involving some rocket use. The costs of support equipment, range costs and launch pads generally scale up with the size of the rocket, but vary less with launch rate, and so may be considered to be approximately a fixed cost. Rockets in applications other than launch to orbit, such as military rockets and rocket-assisted takeoff, commonly not needing comparable performance and sometimes mass-produced, are often relatively inexpensive. Topic. 2010's Emerging Private Competition Since the early 2010s, new private options for obtaining spaceflight services emerged, bringing substantial price pressure into the existing market. Topic. See also Topic Notes Topic External Links Governing Agencies FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA National Association of Rocketry US Tripoli Rocketry Association ASOC Cogeteria Experimental y Modelista de Argentina United Kingdom Rocketry Association IMR German Austrian Swiss Rocketry Association Canadian Association of Rocketry Indian Space Research Organization Information Sites Encyclopedia Astronautica, Rocket and Missile Alphabetical Index Rocket and Space Technology Gunter's Space Page, Complete Rocket and Missile Lists Rocketdyne Technical Articles Relativity Calculator, Learn Tsiolkovsky's Rocket Equations Robert Goddard, America's Space Pioneer